Hey there, Dengas Stu here. Today's video is about getting some lessons about the Detroit Diesel from Scott from Bus Grease Monkey and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. I like the fact that you're true to your name, Scott. Um, with, with your, uh, pull your... on in the grease, man. <laughs> <laughs> This guy had this bus serviced, and it, uh, they didn't do a good job. And it's only been 200 miles, and it's just, all these bearings are destroyed. There's damage here on the spindle. Uh, so I'm putting used parts that another uh, viewer of our channel came and brought, oh, brought us okay. here. So we're getting him back on the road where he can drive it back to the shop that did the work. They're going to stand behind it and fix it and, yeah. and get him back on the road. So right. about another, like I said, maybe a half hour I'll have this back, done. back together and go in here. Can Much I have a spindle damage? A or? can of brake clean, please? Yes. Um, just, yeah, I had to sand it down. The bear, I had to, huh, I'll start, I started with the little sledgehammer yeah. to get the, the hub off, which normally that bearing just comes right out. Comes out yeah. I had to, I, this thing. And then I'm like, this isn't doing it, so I upgraded <laughs> to, the to, to the big one. And at least 15 minutes of swinging a sledgehammer wow. to get the bearings off oh. of the spindle. That's how bad it was. That tells you everything you need to know, doesn't yeah. it? And it just made a horrible roaring sound when I tried to spin it. First it was seized, yep. and then when I moved it, and when I took the hub off, water poured out of it. And yeah. It was, it's a hot one again today, though. And yeah, just feeling this race. You wouldn't think that those are brand new. Yeah. So they've done about 80 miles. Uh, he said about 200 miles. Oh, it's, 200. It's 80 right. miles away, and he took one other trip right, after okay, that. Right. Okay. Yep. And the seal is damaged. I don't have another seal to put in it, so this has got to get him there. But you can see there's a sharp uh, edge of rubber yeah. right there. It's yeah. missing all the way over to here. Yeah. And it was put in crooked. It wasn't straight. That's it. Uh, and there's a little dent in it, which I don't know that the dent really affected it as much as it did the fact that it was in crooked. Yeah. But the big problem was this gasket right here. This is a whole gasket right now, but you see this kind of clean spot right here. Yep. Yeah. On the hub. Ah, uh, didn't get rid of it all. No, they left. I don't want that new bearing to fall out into the dirt. But they left a huge chunk of the old, the one, old one under there. there. So that's what didn't make that seal good, and I think yeah. let all that water get in. Yeah. It's all it takes. And then they used a chisel on the that nut, uh, that little like washer looking thing. Yep. One uh, side of it should look this really one? chewed. Yeah. One side of it's really chewed up. Where they, uh, yeah. You're supposed to bend it over, yep. but you're not supposed to use a, a chisel to do it because then it cuts it. So it, yeah. uh, they didn't do any favors to that either. So it's your, lock, your locking tab to stop yeah. it coming undone. Exactly. Yes. I didn't do a very good introduction earlier, but this is Scott from Bus Grease Monkey, the YouTube channel, Bus Grease Monkey. Scott travels around servicing Detroit diesels in vintage buses, and because I've got a Detroit diesel in the trawler, a lot of people said to me, go watch Scott's channel, which I did, and now I'm watching Scott live. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so yours is a, four, a 671, is it? Yep. Right, okay. So we were just having a chat before you joined us, if that makes sense in YouTube world. <laughs> and Scott was saying that you've got a, so this is a cast aluminium. Yep. Uh, well, I said it was a cast aluminum. Alu cast aluminum. So my America's not very good yet. It's a cast aluminum, <laughs> and, uh, and they don't leak as much. N not at all. Yeah, they have a, a special like neoprene kind of style, real thick rubbery gasket. It's shaped like a T, and there's these little rubber bushings at the top that puts just the amount, perfect amount of torque on it, and they don't leak. Those the cast, the stamped steel ones leak like crazy because yeah. they, they get they get bent. So where you tighten down the knobs at, uh, it bends in between them, and they'll yeah. always leak like that. Okay. And so you were saying, excellent advice. You'll drive yourself crazy if you try and get rid of every leak. If you try to get rid of oil leaks, you will go to an insane asylum because okay. they, they always leak oil. Uh, they say that if you hang a picture of a Detroit diesel on your wall, there'll be a, an oil puddle on your floor the next morning. That's that's how they are. So where do they leak from? A lot of places. There's a lot of vibrations going on. Right. Um, number one, they have air air box drains. Yes. So uh, yes, yes. So in the air box, you get some unburnt fuel and yep. a little bit of oil, especially if your blower's passing some oil. Mm -hmm. uh, you get extra oil in there, and that's designed to just drain out of the bottom mm -hmm. and just right onto the ground as you drive uh, down the road. Okay. So mine was going into a catch can, yep. which is supposed to empty periodically. And I've yes. seen companies that sell quite nice billet, you know, fancy catch cans and things. But and you can make one out of a PVC tube or a Coke bottle. <laughs> that's or it. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, exactly. If the engine is real healthy though and the blower's in good shape, yep. you should see almost nothing coming out of there. Okay. Very little. Like oh, that's good if you get like a shot glass worth of oil every maybe like fifteen hundred miles on a oh, bus. Okay. I don't know how many hours that would be sure, on a yeah, boat. Yeah. But very little amount. But if okay. you and and one thing I don't like about catch cans on there is because you that's a sign 
what you see coming out of those tubes is a way for you to monitor the health of your engine. Yes. And maybe you'll see coolant coming out of there and okay. something's going on. Or maybe you see excess of oil coming out. Yeah. But if you just have it going into a big container where you can't see what it's doing, right. maybe something's going wrong and you don't realize it. Okay. So I like to monitor what's coming out of there. So it's so a good diagnostic tool It for is. You. It's very good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Interesting. Um, but in a boat, you don't want all that stuff necessarily for environmental reasons and for the yes. cleanliness of your boat. You don't want all that oil in your nasty yeah, bilge. In your bilge, yeah. Uh, well, maybe it'll float on the top and keep the smell down. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, stop <laughs> rust. <laughs> and so, another thing people are saying, so my main concern with my Detroit's being rebuilt, so there's a few issues where I saw a video, actually I'll put a link to your video with the, where you had some, I think, was it Joe here? Joe was here. Yeah, yeah. Joe was here. Joe saved my butt. We, yeah. Uh, uh, it, like 4.58 on a Friday, I started the bus and I instantly knew something wasn't right. I shut it off right away yeah. and we had dropped a valve right. on a brand new head. I had like 800 miles on that head. It had yeah. only been on there for like a week. Yes. And uh, Joe noticed something about the head. The machine shop did the work on it. They didn't do it right. And the protrusions of the injectors, there's an actual setting in the book where the, the tip of the injector goes down a certain depth so that the piston has a cup in the middle of it and that is supposed to be in where all the fuel sprays into the cup and it's a better explosion when it's in the cup. Yeah. And he noticed on my spray pattern that it was up over the top edges so he knew that the injectors weren't set to the right protrusion yeah. in through the head. Yeah. Um, was that what you were asking? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah no, definitely, yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so I guess it's interesting. So for me now getting an, an engine or a motor, the engine back and the head, the head and the block back from a machine shop, it was interesting to see you being in that same situation, but there was still a lot of work to do. You were saying you noticed a lot of extra power when it got set. I have much more power now that he has those set right. Set, so the depth um, made a huge difference yeah, to combustion. Yeah, because I went from a two valve head to a four valve head. Yes. And I had a power increase from that. Yes. I also, when I did the engine rebuild, I went from a smaller injector to a larger injector, so yep. I had a little bit more of a power increase from that. Yep. But then when he set those inje injector protrusions, it was a big amount, like, Especially because I was at altitude, yes, like, yeah. uh, this is naturally aspirated, it's not turbo. Mm -hmm. So even if it has a blower on it, it's not considered supercharged. Yes. It just it requires this to run. Yeah. It's only slightly above atmospheric pressure yeah, so inside there. Pressure, yeah. Yeah. Um, so at altitude, it's terrible. You lose like 3 or 4% performance every 1,000 feet above sea level. Oh, okay. That'll never affect you. You're always a few feet above sea, <laughs> sea level, level or below yeah. sea level. Yeah. Unless things have gone horribly wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how much oil is waiting you Yeah, down. exactly. Um, yeah, I don't want to be too many uh, feet below sea level. <laughs> <laughs> so, so blower, I've got to get my, I've bought a blower service kit. So really, it's seals and bearings. When you say blower in good condition, that's the main thing that goes. Yeah, and a couple of things. One thing about oil leaks on this engine is there's a whole bunch of places where it's required to have a copper washer. Okay. And guys, just take them off. We've got grease and oil. Oh, on right. <laughs> Thanks. Um, <laughs> But the copper washers, because that goes into oil on the other side. Right. Without the copper, people just put like a lock washer on there thinking yeah. they're doing the right just thing. Gonna you can't have a lock washer and it's all over the place. All the ones on the blower, all the ones to the governor, and anything that goes through into the head, it all has to be copper washers instead of lock washers. Thing. Okay. And if you see oil leaking from somewhere around a bolt, look at it and you should probably have to have a yeah. copper washer. Just take one out, put yep. a copper washer on. Yep. And that's the other thing. So this is, uh, does this have any shutoff facility for your blower at all? I do. Yeah. yeah. Mine, mine is in, inside this piece right here. Okay. And it's, it's behind that zip tie right there. Right, okay. The reason that I have it zip tied, it, this solenoid actually worked. I, it, a couple years ago I took it off, but I was driving down the highway and this little pin vibrated up. Okay. And it slapped shut. Oh, uh, okay. That's the same symptoms when you're driving as running out of fuel. Right. And I have an auxiliary tank, so I thought, oh, it's running out of fuel. fuel. Yeah. I was going like 70 miles an hour, so yeah. I flipped to the aux, aux tank to get it to suck fuel through there. Mm -hmm. And I'm staying with the clutch, you know, uh, yeah. just in gear, going down the highway, not realizing that the blower was closed. I was sucking oil through the seals on the right. blower. Uh, when I stopped, there was a trail of oil <laughs> down the highway, and probably a, at least a half a gallon just poured out of those airbox drains. Oh, wow. I waited for everything to get out of there. I turned it over by hand a couple times to make sure mm -hmm. there wasn't oil on one of the pistons like uh, yeah. bend a rod or something yeah um, opened it back up and started up and drove it home it so was just fine. huge vacuum once yep. you just suck but it I in. had to replace the blower seals again because right. that happened you because they were, the they, were, they were sucked through yeah. and ruined so at the moment I've got a, a rectangular like a box almost a tissue box shape with grills at each side is that common on buses or I've is never that seen that thing? I don't think I've ever might seen be a marine thing, thing then. yeah so at the moment I actually don't have any way to shut the air off other than putting a piece of plywood over it or... Which that's great. The yeah. plywood is great. I don't know if you, you want me to tell you a story, but this, this ran away on me once. Okay. It yeah. was, it's a hilarious story. <laughs> My wife who's standing behind us may, may me not think it's so funny, but <laughs> I drove her car that day. It's a BMW. And I parked it right 
about here, <laughs> and I had left the passenger door open on it, okay, so my tailpipes are right there, her door's right here, BMW. <laughs> I had just done some work on the engine, and when I did it, the bottom corner of my governor had broken off. It, it, it's, it's, it's cast aluminum at the right. bottom. There's two bolts here that are longer than the two over here, and I didn't realize that I put them in backwards. Yeah. So the longer bolt broke that piece, right. and it, 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 it blocked that governor from moving. So when I started it, it was at full fuel. I couldn't turn the fuel off, yeah. and I didn't have this piece on. Um, so it was just the blower there. I was trying to shut the rack off. It wouldn't shut off. It's screaming. It's like six, seven, maybe 8,000 RPMs. Yeah. The loudest noise you've ever heard. I, I was... I was ready to seriously quit. I yeah. run away from it because it was going to yeah, pieces were going to start flying out. Yeah. There was a beach towel laying here. I grabbed the beach towel and I threw it in the blower. The blower ate up the beach towel. Flaming chunks of beach <laughs> towel flew out of the exhaust into her car. There's still soot marks to this day inside of her BMW. With the window down? Yeah, oh, I had the door open. Oh, the door was just open. Oh, nice. I had like a box of parts on the, on the seat. Oh, dear. But when that happened, that towel, before it all got through there, part of it lodged up in there, it seized it, it broke the blower drive shaft off, the fuel pump seized on it because it was so hot from spinning right. so, so fast hot. and it's instantly stopping. It yeah. was toast. Yeah. But uh, my friend sent me for 10 bucks. He sold me a, a used uh, blower, blower drive shaft. Yep. I had a spare fuel pump, so it didn't cost me any money yeah. in part other than 10 bucks to get it going again. But that, that little broken corner locked the governor at full fuel and it just, yeah. uh, wow. I started it up front and I wasn't even out of the door and it was already probably 2,000 RPM. It was oh, just, right. you were at the wheel wheel wheel. Wheel. It was just going straight was, up. It was, and the sad thing is, is right before that I had done another start of the engine, uh, and then the blower was leaking oil, so I had to take the blower off. Yeah. When that first start, I recorded it. Okay. Everything's fine, you know, no big yeah. deal. So the second start, all I do is put the blower on and off. Nothing's going to be different on it. It's going to start fine. I would have made a lot of money on that video. Hey, you would have <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's gold. Go. It went wrong, but as long as you. So I had this friend who was. Uh, they did these supercharged race cars. And he said, they pushed the limit. And he said, uh, I don't care if you blow it up as long as the camera's on. That was his only <laughs> revisor. So, okay, so blow it up. So the rule is always have a towel ready when I'm starting it. That'll make sure it'll, yeah. like, I can stop it. And when, when you do your blower seals, if you're, yeah. you're going to place the blower seals yes. and bearings, and bearings yes, do? yes. Okay. Um, make sure that you don't take the lobes apart because they are clocked in a certain position. Right, yep. So don't, if you take one and you rotate it one yep. notch, it's not going to be not the same. Not going to work, yep. Uh, and I just recommend if you're doing it yourself, do it one at a time. There's some specific shim, uh, okay. there's specific shims that are in there. Yep. If it's set up right, I mean, you can, you're going to have to check your, your there's, the book gives you like, I don't know if it's five or six different places where you check the clearance, the tolerance. Put some seal gauges in or something. Exactly, okay. yep. uh, And those shims that are in the end, usually when I do it, the same shims, you put them back in and it's completely fine when you're doing okay. that. But yeah. you still want to check it. Yeah. But the shims add, will move one in or out, which is going to affect the, gotcha. the, the clearance. The clearance time. between the yep. lobes. Yep. And uh, make sure the bearings fit tight. They should be like a press-in fit. If they're yes. just loose and falling out, then that's no good. And is there an issue with the depth you set the bearings? I've been told there's a special tool for setting the depth of the bearing. Um, or do they just bottom out they somewhere? Just, yeah, they just go up against it. But the, yeah, the okay. depth has to do with the shims that are in there, though. Okay. Because that right. the, the blower has the adjustment on there, so that's okay. very critical. Very critical. Okay. Yeah. And you're saying, so do one lobe at a time? Do, well, do one side at a time. Oh, side. Don't okay. take apart this side and take apart this side. Do, gotcha. do one side, side at a time. Right. So yeah. both bearings one side, both bearings the other side. Yeah. And there is no gasket in this in this section here. There's no gasket. Okay. It's just aluminum. Alley aluminum, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so is there a sealant? If there's no gaskets? No, it's just, yeah, it's, it's zero tolerance. It's like, it's, it's just, just, just yeah. tight fit. Yeah. Yeah. So going back a little bit, when you talked about the blower drive shaft, I was told they're a little bit sacrificial. They're actually designed that if things jam up to actually shear and... So I've got to get a spare to keep on the boat. It's a shaft. very good thing that I yeah. always carry a spare with yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I highly recommend it. That's, that's there's a few. I carry a spare fuel pump. Yes, uh, okay. a spare blower drive shaft. There's also a little for the fuel pump. There's a little drive gear that yes, turns the it. Yes, little T piece yep. or something. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah. So carry a spare one of those. Yeah. Um, water pump. Probably not so important for you the pump, but the drive. There's a little, uh, also Another. a little. It's a, it's similar to what the fuel pump okay. one is. Yep. Some of them are made out of plastic, and some okay. of them are metal. Okay. You want to make sure what kind you have, because the plastic ones can can uh, the gears strip out on them real easy. Oh, okay. All right. So oil, not a big spare, you were saying. Yeah, and oil's real critical. So straight 40 weight CF. Which is a little bit hard for us to find in Australia. Yeah. It's, it's hard to find. You, yeah. can, you can use 30 weight. 30 weight is what the spec used to be. They okay. changed, Detroit changed it to 40. So your book right. probably says 30 weight okay. on there. Yeah. Um, but it needs to be a CF2 rated oil, which that's not a real common uh, mm -hmm. classification anymore. Any so a lot of companies yeah. don't pay to do that. Yeah. Uh, Della 100, Rotella, 
the again they're all straight 40 weights. Like I went to one guy's house working on his bus and he was leaking oil. Oil was like coming out of the exhaust and yeah, it was just right. oil everywhere. everywhere. And I asked him, you know, what oil are you using? He said, well, I just got this 40 weight, but he had zero W40. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't understand that that wasn't straight 40 From weight. a Toyota 86 or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty light. All right, so oil is built definitely. And obviously fuel, fuel filters, filters yeah, etc. Uh, uh, I carry spare starters too, so okay. For in me, I could you know if I'm on a hill or something, I can bump start it. You yes, can't do that no, in the boat, not easily. Uh, so I not, and I do carry a spare starter. That's another okay. important. And your engine is right hand rotation, I assume. Now that's something I haven't yet determined actually. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. So depending on what side the camshaft installed, you can tell. Can you? Um, well. I'm going to guess it's right hand. Okay. You can also tell by the serial number. You can look up the serial number. Right. That'll It'll tell you how it was if yeah. that's the original motor that was supposed to be in a boat. Yes. Sometimes somebody took it from a generator, but because you could change this motor around any way you want. I'm presuming the gearbox doesn't reverse it in any ways. In which case, it is a right hand propeller. So yeah. Uh, because this engine here, I'm going to go to a turbo on this. And when I do oh, it, oh yeah, okay. I need to switch my exhaust manifold over to this side. Good side. So to do that, it's still this is a left hand rotation engine. Right. My engine turns backwards and get. Yeah but I'm still going to move the camshaft from one side to the oh, other okay. so that I can have the exhaust on this side over here right. so that there's room, because there's no room in the backside wall for you yeah. to do that. So the position of the camshaft's not gonna tell you which direction the rotation yeah. of the engine is. Oh, okay, um, all right. The position, um, not on the inline. On, on a V-series, there's a, there's a specific gear that goes in a certain place, and then you yeah, can tell which you can way tell. it is. Okay, yeah. All right, I guess just, I'm sure it's right-handed. Yeah. The starter probably says right-handed starter on it well, too. Yeah. 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 So space does have the So it's easier to find a right-handed starter, which is what my train of thought was to find. Right. Mine's a left-handed starter. They're not readily available. Uh, so that's why I make sure I carry a spare because okay. it would take, otherwise it would take me a couple days to get yeah, one tracked gotcha. down. Okay. And, uh, so what was I thinking then? Um, oh, turbo, yes. So uh, more fuel efficient with a turbo, is that right or not? Uh, well, it, it would be at altitude for sure. Yeah. But the way that I'm going to drive it, it will not be more fuel okay. efficient. So I'm going to take the power, the power get, side, get yeah. the power, and you know. Yeah. So I, I won't. It won't be more fuel efficient, uh, but I'll have a lot more horsepower. Yeah. I, and I'll get about another 50 horsepower out of it. Okay. So for me, that'll that'll help. Yeah. Which and I have propane injection on this one too. Oh, okay. So I have a light a light fogging of propane that goes right into here, and that gives me like 10 or 15 horsepower okay. boost as well. Okay. All right. Uh, it's more of a. Um, it enhances the burn. It's yeah, not okay. really, yeah, it, it makes a more complete burn. So like the propane is getting mixed up in the blower. It's already in the cylinder. When the yeah. injector fires, that propane's mixed already really well with the oxygen, oxygen. Yeah. and it's just a better, more complete burn. So okay. if I'm going up like a big grade, and I start to see black smoke coming out the exhaust because yeah. I'm not getting enough oxygen. The, yeah. the, the running the motor, yeah. it's, it's, it's maxed out on the power it can produce. Yeah. I flip that propane switch on, the smoke goes away because it's burning all burning, of that okay. fuel. Oh, so it's and not one permanently, it's up the just for your hills and yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. cool. Oh, that's interesting. And what about uh, engine longevity of this turbocharged? Well, anything that you do that you add more power to it, yeah. you're going to reduce the longevity of it. But they're pretty strong motors anyway. They are. Right? The, so. uh, the 71 series, especially the inline, is so yeah. much more robust. The bottom end is way more. The the bearings for the main bearings are twice as wide as they are in a V series. Right. Oh, of course. Cool. Yeah. The, yeah. The rod bearings are twice as wide. Yeah. The main bearings, you have twice as many. Many of them. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I have seven as opposed to having four right. in a V6 okay. compared to an inline series. So Interesting. Oh, that's good. Everything spreads the load better on yes. the crankshaft. So it's just. You can, I mean, I've, I've had these people drive these to me with a, a hole big enough for you to stick your fist through it in their piston, and it's still running. Still running I mean, yeah. they're very good Well, I, I definitely realized, having run up the coast with mine, how bad the shape it was actually in when I took it apart. And um, I had uh, broken springs on the injectors too. A couple of the injectors had broken springs and things, and, yeah. it was, and the, the hull was dirty. It was still running. I think it's going to run, now with a clean hull and a reconditioned engine, I think it's going to go nicely. Yeah, you'll see a huge power improvement. Yeah. Um, and I, I just love that. That's all I work on are the two-stroke Detroit's. Yeah. And I don't even work on the electronic ones. They have the D-Deck fancy ones. Oh, okay. Yeah. I only work on the mechanical. And it's just, that's what I love. To me, it's like a giant... It's a mix between a lawnmower engine and a Volkswagen. It's kind of right, okay. it's right in between. <laughs> nice. So, uh, my other thing then is... Um, okay, it, it's come back from the shop. I've uh, probably with the head installed in the block, but I've still got to throw the blower, the fuel pump, and all that sort of ancillary stuff on. I get some fuel, so you turn the rack off. So it's so basically it's arrived. I'm looking at getting close to trying to fire it up for the first time. 
Okay. What's your basic procedure in that situation? The first thing you want to do is make sure that there's fuel primed in everything. Yes. So you don't want your injectors to be pumping when there's no fuel in them. Gotcha. Very bad form. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's no good. Yeah. Uh, so I use I run I have an electronic pump on mine that I can flick a switch. Oh, yeah. And it'll pressurize my fuel system, but it is it does get restricted at the mechanical fuel pump. It can't push fuel through that. Through it. So I usually just turn it over by hand with a bar, real slow, a couple times. Yep. And by the time I do that, that pre that fuel pressurizes. Oh, okay. Even system. by hand, it's yeah, yeah. it's enough uh, before I start it. And then if you disconnect the governor before you start it, there's a rod that goes between here and here to mm -hmm. the rack. Another one. Yep. You disconnect that rack. Yep. Oh, okay. So it's and free you, of the governor. And you're and yep. So you're the one in control of it, and you can move it like that. And that's how. When you look down inside there, there's a governor, I think called the governor gap on it. Mm -hmm. um, and you need to make have everything backed off on your governor. And it's a spring gap that's in there. And it's between the high speed and the low speed spring. And there's a setting in your book. Okay. And you'll, you'll see it as you rev it up and come back down. And right between this, it's this little level arm on the side. I have a video of it on my website. Okay, yeah, I'll put a link watch. to that then. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, and as it comes over, you put a little shim or a, a, a feeler gauge in between there. Yeah. And get it set just right. And there's an adjustment screw on it. Yeah. Um, I think it's 0 0.02 uh, millim or, uh, inches, but I, I can't remember what it is. So two, two, point, point zero zero two, whatever it is. Yeah. It's in the book. I don't remember. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I always look at the book for all those settings because I don't remember any of them. That's like, it. Yeah, it's a book's full. You're a four valve head. Yes. So you're doing the tune up on the head and everything too, like setting your valves. I guess that. so. So there's a oh, look. I'd love to do it, but at the same time, I don't want to put many thousand dollars into having a motor reconditioned, an engine reconditioned, and then doing damage to it. So we do have a guy I finally found, um, I think his business is 892 Truck Servicing or something, and he's a Detroit guy. Okay. Um, so I'm tempted to get a specialist to do it, but do you feel it's something that with the books and some mechanical knowledge, you could, you could do it? You could do it. Yeah. You could, it's, yeah. You're just setting valves like you do yeah. on anything else. Yeah, so I just mean, valve clearances. And, exactly. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. The, yeah. And the book tells you very detailed how to do it. It's like on a four valve head. Books, yeah. yeah. It's uh, 0 0.017 is the feeler gauge you use to set it. Yeah. But when you tighten it down, after everything's tight, the 0 0.017 should no longer fit, but a 0 0.015 right. will. Okay. So it's, you kind of have a go, no go. And yep. so if it fits or it doesn't fit, you're between those two settings and you can go do that for your exhaust valve. Just methodical, it just is. go through. Yep. All done cold obviously, so and no. It, yeah, there is a cold setting and a hot setting. Okay. Um, I've tried the hot setting. Yeah. It's the most miserable thing you'll ever do in your life <laughs> okay. because everything is 180 degrees that you're, you're touching. touching. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then by okay. the time you get from one end to the other, yeah. it's already cooled off 30 degrees. So yeah. the, the cold setting by far oh, is right. the best, the best way, way to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay. unless you want to start it and run it again, get it back yeah. up to 180 degrees and continue yeah. to burn yourself. Yeah. So you'd be looking for, um, so sorry, just going back a step. Uh, you're priming the fuel and you're looking for it coming back out of the return to the tank. That's yep. when you know you've got yep. it all the way. Uh, so fuel coming out to return the tank, disconnect the governor, um, set, then set the gap. Set the gap. Yep. And then you would reset the governor back up. Back. Oh, okay. So set your gap. You set yeah, the governor first. You, you have to set the gap first. So the governor is doing nothing other than it, the, the free weights are spinning inside yep. there, and you're hitting the, the you're setting this lever inside of here to adjust between it goes when it goes from the high speed to the low speed okay. weights that are in there. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just it's called the governor gap. So the book tells you how to do it, but yeah. And then after you've done that, you can hook the rod back up. Now the governor, it. Yeah. yeah, the engine won't run away with you doing it when you're fiddling with it because yeah. you can turn it off or on you full as long as you don't have a stuck injector. Yes. So I always make sure I bar the engine over a couple of revolutions because yeah. one of the injectors, like it might work right now, but after it gets fired a couple times manually, it must stick. it'll stick. Okay. And then if your rack is the old school kind, like I have in my bus, where if one is stuck. They're all stuck in that same position, yeah. which is why it's allowed to run away. Yeah. They have a newer style where each finger that controls an injector is individually spring-loaded. Right. So if one of them sticks, then the other three are, still would go back to their regular right. position. Right. So you're a lot less likely to have a runaway condition. They're not all just linked to each other. Exactly. Okay. So reconnect, uh, set it, and then set the gap, and then reconnect it back up, and then you back off your idle screw, which is in your. And I have videos on that too. Okay. The idle's in the middle, and you, can, you just back it off. You won't feel any tension on it. It's usually a little like flathead screw thing on the end, or an okay. Allen screw. It's very right, small. Okay. Uh, you'll have to put a pair of vice grips on the. Uh, there's a shaft that comes out. You can put vice grips on it to hold it because there's a locking jam nut. It's like okay. a 716 nut. You loosen it, then you can spin out the idle oh, screw. Gotcha. So and okay. about 600 RPM is usually where you want it at, maybe okay. seven. Depending on what you're doing, I don't know what you're in the boat world, so it might be different. Yeah. Uh, but no, in buses, about right. we yeah. run it enough to where the alternator's producing some exactly. power. Exactly, you're going to give it a power. Yeah. Uh, and then once you have that set, if you want to set your high speed, no, no load on it, which I have this one. I had it set 
at 2415. So okay. 2415 RPM yeah. is what I had it at, but Joe brought it up to maybe 2600. Okay. So I'm trying to control myself to not let it do that. Okay. I, I, I take it up to the governor sometimes, uh, but it, it gave me an extra couple mile an hour highway speeds. Right, so for, okay. I say Joe gave me a passing gear now. <laughs> okay, nice. But you gotta understand the higher RPM you turn, the least amount of time you're gonna get out of the engine. Yeah. And so if you run at like 1800 RPM all day long, like you're doing a generator, yes. but let's say it's a, a, I don't, I'm gonna make up a number, but we'll say a, a, a 5,000 hour motor. I yes. don't know if that's good or bad. Yeah. Um, but if you run it at 2,000 RPM, well now it's a 4,000 hour motor. Gotcha. Yeah. If you go at 2,400 RPM, you know, it's a 1,500 hour motor. I'm just making those numbers yeah, up. Yeah. I'm showing no, you that it's exponentially, you're decreasing the life of the engine. Exponentially. The, yeah. the faster it turns, the more wear and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Okay. So it's not good for this, but I know how to fix it. I know how to rebuild it. So yeah. I'm comfortable. I'd rather have the extra speed and, okay. and power. Okay, just know you're going to redo it periodically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, okay, so then we've, we've, done all that, what's next with regard to the first fire? Um, so I've seen you... Sit, sit, make you sure you have something where you can cut off the air. Yeah, okay, so yeah. you've got your board to stick on yeah, there, or yeah. your towel to throw in the board. <laughs> we'll go with the board. Yeah, <laughs> um, Yeah. That, I mean, that's it. You just want to turn it over and then make sure that as you as you add the idle back into it, you'll, um, you'll feel tension get on it, and it'll start to fire up if you're just bringing it up slowly with the idle screw. But you can usually bring it in about a Two thirds of the way, and yeah. then that get, it'll give it a good place to start. Okay, and yeah. then you can get, get it set. In the ballpark, and then yeah. turn from there. And if you don't have a real tachometer, you can use an optical tachometer. Yeah. Uh, if you have the, a crank pulley, which you probably don't because of your gearbox on there. Uh, if you have any kind of a camshaft pulley on a Detroit, that's one to one as well. Right. Okay. So it, one revolution there is yeah. one revolution of the crankshaft because everything. Everything, if, if you understand how two-stroke works, yeah. that's the stroke is up and down. It's yes. one revolution. Everything happens. In yes, it's and the done. 71 series stands for 71 cubic inches per cylinder. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that certainly gives me a bit more confidence. Because, <laughs> the, and I must have been, I've re been really impressed with the quality of the manuals that come with it. It's almost like they don't do that anymore. Though. They don't. No. no. It's no. like it was designed for a day when maybe you were going to do a lot more yourself, and they're written with so much detail. GM wasn't in the business of having all the vehicles come into their shops for repairs like they are now. That's it. Yeah. And same thing about the quality of this vehicle. You know, they made it too good. That's why it's 72 years later. It's still flying all over the country yeah. because it's such a good motor, such yeah. a good bus. They realized if they made them too big, then the bus companies didn't have to come back 10 years later and buy a new bus. Yeah. So right. now they last about 10 years, yeah. and it's complete <laughs> junk. You got to throw yeah, it out and buy it. a new one. No, exactly. Ah, oh, which is interesting. It's just mine's actually been reconditioned before. Uh, so I got an email while I was in the US saying uh, the cylinder liners you sent us, we actually need 30,000 over on the cylinder liners, which is interesting. I didn't realize you'd ever need to machine the block because I would have thought being liners. And that's, that your, your, your engine's been machined several times to be that far. Right. 30 is a lot. A lot, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. we have, there's like standard and there's one, two, three, four, um, which the first time you do it, usually you can put a one in there, yeah, and then okay. the next time it's going to get maybe get twos or threes, yeah. the next time maybe threes or fours, yeah. and then after that, then it goes to ten thousand silver. So, so, and they, yeah. they line board and they take it out ten thousand, yeah. which is a mile difference compared yeah. to the other. The, the, and then after ten, then they're going to do it at twenty. 20 30, and then so the next time they do it, it's going to go to thirty. Yeah. And that that block has seen a lot of life to yeah, have that kind of number, but that doesn't affect really anything. Anything, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you're completely fine. So I looked at the serial number and I think it was a 1960 motor. I think that's when it was made. It's according to the serial number and the, the list. What year is this one? Uh, the, the bus itself is a 1947. The yep. block serial number is a 52. 52, wow. Well, so, yeah. yeah. And Joe, when he had this apart, uh, he's He's been in he, since he was a kid. His dad worked on Detroit, so okay, and, yeah. and he's not a spring chicken. So he, he's he's a. I'm not insulting Joe. He's not old. He, he's experienced. <laughs> yeah. So he knows everything about this. But he said this probably has four million miles on the governor. Wow. When he saw the wear, yeah. He, he said he'd never seen that kind of wear. Pretty much so. Any used Greyhound bus, I think two million miles is a pretty good number to get a. Wow. Yeah. But he said it, he's never seen that much more wear in a governor before. That he said it's probably a four million four mile. Four million mile plow. So, <laughs> that's right. Don't they have a million mile club or something for Detroit? Yeah, yeah. Think, maybe. Yeah, I think they do. <laughs> all right. Well, we put about 35, 40,000 miles on the bus a year. So we, right, you we, do it. We yes. go all over the place. So those of you who don't watch Scott's channel, shame on you. Uh, <laughs> but Scott does a lot of traveling around uh, helping other people with buses, vintage buses, 
with Detroit Diesels. So some boats. Sure to, uh, some boats. Oh yeah, you did. I saw that one, the dual engine one, <laughs> wasn't yeah. it? So do watch. <laughs> watch for your info. Yeah. Um, so when are you coming to Sydney? When I, I'll, I'll buy the ticket if you come over and help me get it started. I would love to do that. All right, done. <laughs> All right, but in the meantime... So why don't you ask all those questions? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> For these people. <laughs> so thanks a lot. And uh, if you're not subscribed to Bus Grease Monkey, then make sure you do, because Scott knows more about Detroit Diesels than I ever will, and they're awesome motors, and also lots of awesome adventures with your travels as I, well. So. I think we do have a lot of fun adventures, and we see a lot of weird stuff, and yeah. it's, it's just fun. <laughs> just to make sure the camera's on next time. Yeah. <laughs> so have you ever driven a vehicle with air brakes? No. Okay. So there's a gauge over here for air pressure. Um, if it gets below 60, the brakes automatically apply. Okay. So I'll help you keep an eye on it. But the one thing you don't want to do is pump your brakes a lot, like you're coming up to something. Okay. You want to just push on it and just hold it down. Hold the pressure. Yeah, because if you pump it, then you're using air pressure every time and it won't yeah, keep up. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it releases it and yeah. yeah. But yeah. I won't let you screw that up. Okay. Um, as far as driving the bus, it is a four speed on the column. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how your four speeds are, but. I've only ever had floor gear shifts too. So. Okay, so it's it's basically an H pattern and it's just turned on its side. So first would be up yep. and up that way. Yep. And then second is you're on the top end and back to yourself. Third, you gotta go to the middle, drop down in the revert in the neutral position and then go forward. Okay. So down and forward is third. You gotta be careful when you're in third. You never wanna like pull up to a oops, you don't want to go into third here. If you're in third and you and you like roll into a parking lot in third gear and you wanna open the door, you do this. <laughs> smash your knuckles right in. It hurts <laughs> yeah, like a, a good tip. son of a... Never do that. Okay, that's a good tip. And then fourth is on the bottom end and down. Gotcha. So H would be up, one, two, two. down, and then three, four. Done. Pretty easy. Now, clutch, double clutch. Everything's double clutching on here. So, uh, if I'm getting ready to start out in gear, I would push the clutch in, put it up into first gear. To start taking off, you don't actually give it any throttle whatsoever. Okay. All you do is just gently let off of the clutch, right about like that kind of a motion. Yep. You'll feel the bus just go. Okay. If you're on a hill, which we're a little bit of an incline here, it may not just go like that. I might okay. have to give it a little throttle, but that's only if you're on an uphill thing. 99% okay. of the time, you do not have to do any throttle. You'll burn the clutch up on a bus real quick like that. Okay. So now I'm in first gear. It's out. As soon as, as, soon as the clutch is out, then you can give it gas go. and go. I call it gas. Throttle. Yep. You go. Uh, so we're revving up, the engine's getting really loud, it's screaming back there. You might feel, if you get up on the governor, you'll feel it fall on its face. It's just no okay. longer acceleration, you just kind of feel it slug like that. And then you put the push the clutch down to the floor, let the clutch out as you go into neutral, Yep. and then you push the clutch back in and drop it into second, and then when you let the clutch out, yep. then you're into gear. Into gear, yeah, yeah. okay. But I, I, the way I set it is ten times slower than you actually do it. Do so it. it's just like in, out, yeah, in, yeah, out, boom. Yeah. Okay. Um, it'll take you a little bit to get used to, and you'll hear a noise that goes because <laughs> that's what you'll be doing. <laughs> and I look at the grimace on your faces. <laughs> no. I don't care. I do it too. The thing is, we need to replace the clutch. So right. I do need a new clutch. I have a new clutch in the bay to go in it. Um, typical with uh, one of these GM buses, the Spicer 4 speed, a lot of times when you're idling in neutral and you go to put it into first gear, it's going to grind. So right now when I put it into first gear, it's probably going to grind just a little bit. Right. Yep, there's yeah. no way to stop that. It's just how they work. So, so my parking brake is over here. I'll turn my parking brake off. It's going to want to roll backwards off some blocks. So I'm going to have to let off the throttle pretty quick here. Or off the, off the clutch. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, just, see, I haven't done any throttle, any throttle yet. yet. Yeah. That's just the bus going. Everything was unplugged and closed up, right, Kelly? Yes. If not, we ripped it all out. <laughs> yeah. Okay, going up the hill here. And this Dragging is... his power pole behind us. Yes. Yeah. I don't end up in the ditch here. Yeah, it was tight getting in. It was really tight getting in. And the turn radius is terrible. I'm giving it some throttle. Picking it up pretty close to the governor. Climbing a hill like nothing. It's on the governor. In, out, in, down a second. Yeah. Gotcha. I have no idea how to Kelly Lee put in, how to get back. Yes. 